Uh, yeah, hey, this is Tony. Oh, well, and welcome to another episode of Crime Pays a Botany Dozen. Today I'm coming to you from North Florida. We're in a loblolly pine forest, and we're going to be focused on a lot of aquatic stuff. A lot of nice stuff here. A lot of these aquatic plants, pitcher plants, and other nice stuff growing in these uh, waterlogged soils on uh, Miocene sands, roughly, I don't know, 15 million year old uh, sandy sediments. So uh, let's start right here with this... Uh, Saracenia minor, okay, one of the pitcher plants, one of many. Also got Drosera capillaris, another carnivorous planter. You got so many carnivorous plants because in this waterlogged soil, this waterlogged boggy soil, uh, nitrogen uh, is uh, somewhat hard to come by, okay? It's a uh, very acidic waterlogged soil, and so it makes the nitrogen uh, uh, relatively inaccessible to plants. So anyway, first uh, taking a look at this uh, Saracenia minor, you could see uh, these are modified leaves acting as pitchers, which effectively trap insects. Uh, on the inside of this tube, they've got downward pointing hairs, which make it hard for the insects to crawl out. And they've also got these translucent window cells uh, on the back of the pitcher, which, uh, you know, the insect tries to crawl to once he's stuck in there. All right, effectively avoiding the real exit, which is, uh, of course, right here. So they're lured in there by nectar, and then uh, they effectively get stuck, pile up at the bottom, and decompose. They used to have... Uh, some Saracenia plants I got. I think I got them from California carnivores. Uh, in my garden in Oakland back when I used to live over there in California. And, uh, you know, being that there were so many shit flies in Oakland because of all the trash and stuff. You know, I'd, uh, they'd fill up uh, every year. i just keep them in a, you know, a container full of water in full sun. And they would fill up every year to about there. And then once it uh, got so many they were rotting, we'd just send up another leaf. So, great, uh, great living fly trap. Look at this. Right here we have a hybrid. Okay, this is Saracenia X formosa between saracenia it's a hybrid between saracenia citicina and saracenia minor look at that bizarre flower structure all right this one's about done let's look at this one instead what you've got right there is basically that that thing on the end is a a modified style uh each one of those five lobes has its own little stigma on it you can see it you can see it right there See a little knob coming off the end that's the stigma you've of course got those yellow anthers in there all those stamens insects crawl in right there crawling past that uh, that uh, stigma, effectively pollinating if they picked up pollen on another plant, and then go in there and, uh, you know, dance around, do a little dance with the shit, come in contact with those stamens, getting the nectar up top, and then have to just drop out basically right there uh, where that petal is. So that's how they, they leave. So they come in, bring in uh, pollen, uh, pollinating that notch stigma, and then uh, pick up pollen on their way out and then leave out the bottom of the flower. So the, they'll go in there, do a little dancing with the shit, and then of course they exit by kind of pushing that flap open and dropping out the bottom. But uh, hopefully when they crawl in and have to pass that notch stigma when they're going in, they uh, are bringing pollen from another flower, hopefully another plant, because uh, outcrossing is always best, and uh, brushing against that stigma and uh, effectively pollinating this plant, at which point all those stamens will fall off and you'll get a little capsule uh, fruit uh, maturing in a few months. Oh no, they, there you go. You get your poison oak right there. You have to watch out because I get the ass rash real bad. This plant over here is uh, super common. We get it uh, in Texas. We get it in many states in the southeastern part of the United States. Ilex vomitoria, uh, which of course contains caffeine. And uh, you know, there's somebody's, some uh, drinks are being made with this uh, that they're selling in those overpriced health food stores. Uh, because uh, you can basically treat it like a you know, kind of like a stand-in for coffee though I don't think it has quite as much caffeine, but it does have plenty of other polyphenols other good shit in there as well Those are the flowers of it. You can see Ilex is a large genus down here many species Ilex glabra is here as well But with those dentate leaf margins, this is Ilex vomitoria. Look at that that green ovary with that big uh, That big stigma on top of it and then those four uh, Those four white petals entering water moccasin territory over here. Anyway, I just got to show you this guy real quick all right, because this is a cool one. This is an aquatic member of uh, the genus Stylingia, which uh, I've seen oh, prior to this, only seen in the desert. This is Stylingia aquatica, Euphorbiaceae, the poinsettia family. You could see the flower. Uh, that's the flower spike right there. Let's see if we can get one. Right? Yeah, there you go. There you go. Look at that. Look at those flowers. Okay, and look at those stamens poking out of that uh, that flower as well. And of course, it's Monetia. So the male and female flowers are separate. They're on the bottom. With that big juicy ovary and that three-lobed style uh, is the, uh, that's the fruit, that's the female part of the flower, that's the female flower. And then you've got the male flowers up above, all right? Get those uh, two little stamens poking out, all right? Just a whole, a whole spike full of male flowers, only a couple uh, female flowers with the ovaries in there. Look at the dentate leaf margin and look at how it's just growing 
completely inundated in a, in a bog nice. Look at that, there's quite a few of them here. Pretty uh, pretty common species. Okay, this, we gotta get a little baggy for this. Look at this pink flower and coreopsis. Most of them are yellow. This one, this aquatic bastard, is pink. Pretty remarkable, I wonder how that happened, huh? Wonder, uh, I wonder what its chromosome count is. So uh, anyway, there you go, you can see, uh, does it have, yep, there you go. Look at it, look at the phyllaries on it, and uh, it's got that colliculi, those colliculi, colliculus singular, uh, those spiky bracts subtending the phyllaries. Can't even really see the phyllaries right there, but you can certainly see all those yellow florets, okay, uh, in that uh, flower head. Rather, rather tall too. Look, and you got that beautiful mint green glabrous stem on this guy. Can't even see the basal leaves down there. Oh, look, it's a hypericum. How exciting! Either hypericum uh, fasciculata, fasciculatum, or a chapmanii, but uh. Either way, you know, I mean, I like this genus, but there's so many of them, they're hard to tell apart. There's not much variation among them. I'm sure there's someone out there who studies them and is enamored with them, but uh, I have not seen the light. I do appreciate them, but I just get it down to genus. Hypericum. St. John's wort. What is it good for? What does it do? I think it's like a, you put it you put it in a pill form and it's good for your ass or something. Maybe it's, I don't know, people are always trying to... You know, people are always trying to do, uh, you know, do something with their dong. Is it an herbal medicine for the dong or it's depression? It makes you, I forget what exactly. There's probably some stable phyto, phytochemistry behind it, some valid phyto, phytochemistry. But maybe it, uh, maybe it's, I think it's depression. I think it's, it's good for, for your depression. But then again, so is getting out of the place you live, traveling, uh, or uh, just taking a fucking walk outside. So, uh, you know, depending where you live, you might have to go far. <laughs> I don't know. It anyway, Hypericum, there you go. You can see it's forming a shrub right here, a woody shrub, loving these uh, anaerobic waterlogged soils. This might finally be the day I break down and buy some clags, you know, because I'm going to ruin these boots eventually if I keep just walking out into the muck and stuff. But uh, anyway, look at the base of these trees. We got a member of the family Polygalaceae. This is Polygala lutea. Look at it. Just like a flame, almost like a castilea, all right? All right, burning true, burning up the night, burning up the daytime, too. Bunch of tiny flowers, bunch of orange flowers grouped together, okay? Look at that thing, holy shit. Well, that's a cool plant, man. Got got uh, somewhat, uh, how's the foliage? Is it kind of glabrous? It's kind of glabrous. And then, uh, of course, there's those flowers. Look at that. Just big bracts, huh? Look, there's the individual flowers in there. See that? Just just a big bract hiding a tiny little flower. Look at it. Look, the buttressing on these water tupelos is nice too. Nissa biflora. All right, not Nissa aquatica. I think that's biflora. But uh, it got a really nice form to it, all right, to help stabilize it in that, that uh, you know, waterlogged soil. Look, here's an inflorescence. Okay, remember, it's not just one flower, it's many flowers, which together compose an inflorescence. Those orange things I thought were bracts are not bracts, they're actually wing petals. Uh, of uh, those uh, flowers that is polygola. So wing petals, of course, are, uh, you get them on, uh, you, it's a flower term used for both members of the pea family, Fabaceae, as well as uh, some of the uh, some of the members of uh, polygolaceae. God damn, I'm getting bitten by these little, oh, those things are awful. They're biting, they're just biting like hell. I'm getting bit all over the nose seams. I should have worn long sleeves, Christ. Oh, that's cool. Just pulled this guy up out of that little pond right there. Utricularia, okay, large genus. You get some in South Africa, you, I think you get, yeah, you definitely get some in Australia, and of course you get them in North America too. This is Utricularia radiata. It's got the, the little bladder traps down there, uh, which uh, trap insects. You can see right there those little white bubbles, all right? Again, just compensating for the low nitrogen availability. So it's not actually that nitrogen is not in this soil. It is. It's just not really available because the water is so acidic and uh, it's an anaerobic environment. But uh, look at this structure. Check out this structure, this uh, pentagonal structure it's using. It's, a, it's basically a little floaty device to make sure that uh, that flower is able to be held up uh, in the uh, in the water right there. And of course, the flower, uh, you can't, can you see the little nectar spur? Yeah, there you go. See that little spur poking out? It's the nectar spur. That's, of course, what lures pollinators in there. So safe for flying insects, but if you're an aquatic, if you're a little aquatic, uh, you know, little, little, uh, Aquatic critter crawling around, you get definitely get definitely get trapped in those uh, those little bladders to turn into into food. Beard monocotyler, one of three species in this genus we've seen so far. This is Elytris farinosa narthisiaceae. Is the family Dioscoriales is the uh, order. Oh, something stabbing me. Uh, anyway, there you can see those tiny flowers. Look at the texture on them. All right, very peculiar, kind of like warty, uh, chunky texture to them. And then of course there's that rosette of leaves, uh, Elytris uh, lutea, uh, 
is the, the yellow species we've seen around here. It's another species. This is a Litris aboveda over here, and this is a Litris uh, farinosa, which I just showed you. Look how dense the clusters of flowers are on the spike of a Litris farinosa versus aboveda. And of course, completely different flower structure. Look at that, completely different flower shape. The aboveda one versus this campanulate one kind of tapers in a little point. And look at the goddamn, look at the stamens that it. Oh, showy, showy anthers. Showy orange anthers. Just cut a flower open and you can see what's going on in it. Wonder what pollinates it, something tiny. Look at a nice comparison between the Farinosa flower on the left and the uh, Aboveda flower on the right. Little insects, look at the little insects. You see those little bastards in there? Just when I was wondering what pollinates them, you cut, we cut one of those open, you see those little yellow insects crawling around in there, uh, probably pollinating it. They got pollen all over them, how about they? And then this is Elytris uh, lutea, which is a little bit more showy, and those flowers are a little bit more open. We went ahead and uh, cut open one of those uh, papery flowers, and there you could see what's going on inside with that... Uh, Elongated teardrop shaped ovary and those all those uh, those anthers. It is one. This is interesting Rincospora. It's a member of the sedge family Cyperaceae, but unlike most of the family which are wind pollinated just like the grass family Poaceae, this one is insect pollinated. Rincospora latifolia and look at those those white those white leaves. Look you got two beetles banging inside right there, huh? So it's it's getting it's getting insects in there somehow probably secreting some reward. That's some kind of nectar reward, but it's just uh, it's just a monocot, you know, just the just the uh, member of the uh, poales, the grass order. Pretty weird doing a whole uh, wind pollination thing. Uh, you know, in most cases, sedges put me to sleep, but Carex varicosa is an exception to that. These are female spikes you're looking at right here, and uh, there's the male spike which is already done. So look at this thing though. This shit should be in landscaping. This plant should be in landscaping. Look at it. Holy hell. Beautiful glaucous blue color. And look at the geometry. Oh, that's nice. Holy hell. All right. Especially if you just smoke some pat and you're looking at this. That's pretty nice. Okay. So we're definitely one. Look at look at the geometry. Look at the patterning. Just the spiral. All those all those different shapes. Those beautiful blue shapes with those uh, three, uh, three branched stigmas uh, poking out of them. And of course, uh, those are each one of those is our ovaries, so that, that'll be all seed uh, when it's done. Just growing here in a waterlogged soil beneath the lab lollies. Oh, look at that! That is nice, delicious, and edible. Vaccinium eliadii, one of the native blueberries. You know, I wish I would have waited before I ate the one I just put in my mouth because uh, be good to film it. Yeah, there you go. Well, we'll take this. Look at that. Loving these acidic soils, like so many members of the blueberry family, Eric Casey. Look at that. That is that is a freaking clematis. Look at that. Clematis crispa. Holy shit. Little little companion. Look at the ridges on that uh, perianth, too. Look at that. All those stamens poking out of there. Buttercup family ranunculaceae. God damn it. Look at the new growth, too. Look at that nice, uh, all those uh, all those uh, anthocyanin pigments protecting the foliage. Look at that. That's a beautiful scene right there. They're doing burning right here, which is great for the landscape. Serenora repens, okay, saw palmetto, loves it. You also got sable palmetto up there. Sable palmetto is the tall one. Serenora repens is that short one. It goes, uh, it goes from South Florida all the way up into uh, uh, Southern South Carolina. But the burning is really important for this ecosystem. And look at those beautiful pines over there. The slash pine, Pinus eliadii. You know, what kind of person sees this landscape and uh, wants to put uh, tract housing here, or a, a parking lot, or uh, any of the other heinous shit that comprises most of uh, <laughs> most of America these days. And then look at these bangers. Look at this Iris hexagonia. Hexagona, excuse me. Look at it. Oh my God, look, it's huge. Got a blue stem growing in the muck, and you've got those petaloid styles as well, all right? The anthers, as well as the stigmas, are all there. So you got three, uh, you remember Iris Iridaceae, the Iris family, and parts of three. Look at that. See, there's a, that big juicy anther right there. Look at this guy, Amsonia rigida. Look at that thing. Uh, I'm only used to the desert Amsonias that are moth-pollinated, blooming at night. Amsonia is notable for uh, for the family of Pasanaceae and not having opposite leaves. It's just got alternate. I guess maybe this one has. No, no, they're alternate. See that? They're they're off, so instead of being opposite each other, they're uh, alternating. Glaber stems though, beautiful flowers on it. Yeah, that one too. Look at that. There is a stigma right there. 
all right? So these are pedaloid styles. See, I ripped one off right there. These are these are styles that look like pedals. So that, of course, that's where the pollen gets deposited, and then it gets, uh, gets uh, the pollen tube grows down into the ovary, which is in there, and then it forms a little capsule. Look at this, look, Zephyranthes is the genus here, Amaryllis family, Amaryllidaceae. There's that uh, three-parted stigma poking out, style and stigma, and then there's those six anthers. All right, the rain lilies, the genus colloquially known as rain lilies, because they bloom, they tend to bloom, have a flush of blooms after a rain. Especially if, the, you know, they've had a good year, there's a recent burn, and there's no competition shading them out. They Remember, they got those uh, storage roots in the ground, those bulbs, which, of course, will be completely fine uh, once out of all the uh, overlying veg is burned. Look at this. Look oh, at these things. They got kind of a funky smell to them. It's not bad, but it's not good. Probably moth-pollinated. Look at how far, look at how, how conspicuous those stand out in the landscape. See, if tubular white flower, you could bet your ass it's probably a moth. Oh, that's so nice. That's so peaceful over there. Look at that. Look at the cloud cover. Distant roar of thunder. Uh, but it's getting too dark to film, so uh, I'm going to wrap up there. So uh, anyway, hopefully you got something out of that. And look at that bald cypress in the distance over there, taxodium. Oh, that's nice. Anyway, have a good rest of your evening. Go fuck yourself. Bye. Now, you know, it's, it's a little too dark to film, at least, in a, you know, with decent film quality, but I had to get this yucca aloefolia. It's a yucca growing on a beach, okay, on a, on a, right on the Gulf Coast. Holy shit. Pretty impressive. Look at that. God damn. Smells awful, but that's a nice horseshoe crab. Holy shit.